In this presentation, a general idea about the predictive and agile approaches of project management will be discussed. Then, the Scrum framework within the agile approach will also be discussed. Viewers are then requested to comment their views on the feasibility of implementing Scrum framework in the construction industry. Contents of this presentation are two major project management approaches such as predictive and agile approaches. Then we will discuss the Scrum framework within the agile approach of project management. Then we will look into popular tools used in the Scrum framework. Lastly, we will see how the Scrum framework has been used so far in the construction industry. Let us discuss two major types of project management approaches separately. Predictive or waterfall approach of management is used in projects where we can predict everything up front. Let us have a look into an example. We know that for any high rise buildings, civil structure works will be followed by foundation works. MEP works will be followed by structure works and so on. In most cases, the return of investment for the owner will be generated only after the entire completion and handing over of the project. We will now see common processes in a predictive project management approach in the construction industry. Client or employer will float tender or request for proposal. Qualified contractors will participate in the bid. There will be tender queries and clarifications. There will be bid review reports showing the various aspects of participated contractors. Gauging those aspects, the project will be awarded to the contractor. Contracts are mainly based on FIDIC standard forms of contract. However, please note that some industries are also following other standard forms of contract. Based on the nature of the project, conditions of contract can be based mainly on any of the below. FIDIC Red Book for the projects in which design is done by the client or client representative. FIDIC Yellow Book for the projects in which both design and build is by the contractor. FIDIC Silver Book for Engineering, Procurement and Construction Projects and Turnkey Projects. FIDIC Gold Book for Design, Build and Operate Projects. Schedule, Cost and Resource Planning of the entire project will be done in the form of Baseline Gantt Chart and S-Curve. We know that Primavera and Microsoft Project are the most common tools used in the industry for planning purposes. Estimation of the costs involved in the project such as Indirect costs like overhead or management costs Direct costs like material and labor costs All other initiation activities such as arranging all necessary insurances, setting of the team, etc. will be carried out at this stage. Any approvals from the client or local authorities shall be obtained before starting any construction activities. Approvals are required for documents such as structural design, soil investigation reports, heat load calculation, etc. Shop drawings, method statements, risk assessments, no objection certificates from the local authorities such as civil defense, municipality, etc. Based on the service line agreement between various stakeholders, project team will raise purchase and service requisitions for materials and services. The procurement team will then raise request for quotation or proposal to external suppliers or subcontractors. Once the quotation is approved, a purchase or work order or contract will be issued. Construction and installation activity will be started at the site such as shoring and piling, foundation works, structure works, mechanical electrical and plumping works, firefighting works, 
fit out and facade works, etc. based on the baseline schedule program. There will be several dependencies between each of the tasks with or without a float such as, finish to start, finish to finish, start to finish, and start to start. The sequence of each activity will depend upon these dependencies. After entire installations, testing and commissioning of equipments or processes will be carried out. Each of the activities carried out shall be inspected and approved by the client in line with BOQ line items. These inspections and approvals will be done through material inspection request and work inspection request forms. After all necessary inspection approvals and successful testing and commissioning, the project will be handed over to the client including handing over documents such as manuals, as built drawings, asset details, warranty certificates, testing and commissioning reports, etc. Advance or partial or progressive or lump sum payments shall be processed in line with contract conditions and BOQ. All the above processes will be monitored and controlled based on the baseline program. The project progress will be monitored weekly or monthly basis by reports like daily or weekly or monthly reports, working program, S-curve reports, etc. Now, let us look into Agile approach of project management. The Agile approach is used in projects where deliverables can be achieved iteratively or incrementally. Each increment shall produce a partial return of investment for the client. Unlike the predictive approach, the Agile approach adopts an empirical process rather than planning everything up front. The Agile team is a self-organizing and cross-functional team unlike independent teams in the predictive approach. The Agile approach is responsive to change requests. Whereas in a predictive approach since the scope is well-defined, change is not accepted easily especially in the later stages of the project. Having said the above, transparency, Inspection and adaptation are the pillars of the Agile approach. Kanban, Scrum, Extreme Programming are some of the frameworks used within the Agile approach. To implement the Agile approach of project management, what we need is an Agile mindset, which is defined as its core values. The four Agile values to have an Agile mindset are Individuals and interactions over processes and tools Working software over comprehensive documentation Customer collaboration over contract negotiation Responding to change over following a plan Having said the above, we now know that implementing these Agile values in a construction project has challenges due to the conditions of contract in any construction project. We shall now discuss the Scrum Framework within the Agile approach and various roles involved in the Scrum Framework. There are three major roles in a Scrum Framework. The product owner is the person in liaise with business stakeholders and knows the product requirements. A Scrum team is a group of self-organizing and cross-functional members which does the work and develops the product as per the business requirement. The Scrum Master is the person who controls the entire Scrum process and protects the Scrum team from internal and external disturbances during the sprints. Please note that, in a Scrum framework, there will various iterations of development known as sprints. Each sprint will produce the project deliverables in increments. Each sprint will have a specified duration based on the complexity of the tasks or product. Each increment or few increments together will bring a return of investment to the client. The below shown diagram shows the general process in a scrum framework. Let us look into each process in the coming slides.
The product owner gets the requirement from the business stakeholder. The product owner then lists the requirements or tasks in the form of a product backlog. Hence, the product owner will always be the responsible person for the product backlog. The product owner, scrum master, and scrum team together will conduct a sprint planning. They will prioritize the product backlog and pull out product backlog items in the form of user stories to the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog is formed in such a way that, at end of that particular sprint, there will be an incremental product that can produce a return of investment for the client. The sprint with a predetermined duration will start after the sprint planning. The Scrum Master will protect the Scrum team from any outside or inside disturbances throughout the sprint. There will be a stand-up meeting each day between the Scrum team and Scrum Master, called the Daily Scrum. They will discuss the task done yesterday, task to be done today and, the obstacles the Scrum team is having. The Scrum Master who is a servant leader, is responsible to sort out these obstacles for the team. After each sprint, there will be a sprint meeting review meeting among the product owner, scrum team, scrum master, and the business stakeholders. The incremental product will be demonstrated and delivered. They will discuss the acceptance of the product and the changes required. After the sprint review meeting, there will be a separate retrospective meeting between the scrum master and scrum team. They will discuss the positive and negative things that happened in the last sprint. They will discuss the things to be avoided and added in the next sprint. The sprint process will then repeat with the next set of the sprint backlog. The number of sprints also will be predetermined based on the total product requirements. Let us discuss few of the tools commonly used within the Scrum framework. Kanban board is a board similar to the image shown here. It is used to monitor the progress of user stories in a sprint backlog. It has various columns which represent the progress of the tasks or user stories. Jira is an online tool widely used within the Scrum framework to control and monitor the project. There are also several other online tools like Rally, Asana, etc. Online tools like Jira has several benefits. It has an inbuilt Kanban board so that tedious stick notes can be avoided. These are cloud-based tools, so that tasks assignments and updates to teammates will get real-time notifications. It is accessible through mobile apps also. Is the Scrum framework applicable for construction or hardware projects? The picture below shows a glimpse of daily scrums and Kanban board setup in a company, where they used Scrum framework for the construction project. The picture itself shows the complexity of the process. The diagram below shows the setup of the same company, where they used to the scrum of scrums. This means that, the scrum was implemented in separate teams and then, scrum of scrums was conducted to collaborate the teams. Based on the discussion done so far, is it feasible to implement the scrum framework of project management in the construction or manufacturing industry? If feasible, how it can be implemented without any chaos? If feasible, how efficient it will be in terms of cost and time? Please provide your opinion in the comment box. Please provide your valuable feedback in the comment box. If there are any corrections, kindly mention them in the comment box. Whatever we discussed in the presentation is a general framework only. 
Any project management approach in the industry is tailored versions to suit their company policies and conditions of contract.